Warm welcome to today's talk. Uh, it's Sunday the 11th of December. Now we're going to be looking at what's going on in China and thinking a little bit about the Sinopharm vaccine. We might compare that a bit with the uh, mRNA vaccines we have in the West. Vaccines that work in a completely different way. Two completely different approaches to vaccination. Now the Sinopharm efficacy, according to the World Health Organization, is a 79% relative risk uh, reduction in preventing infection and hospitalisation. The Pfizer original paper claimed a 95% relative risk reduction, and later analysis have shown that this gives an absolute risk reduction of uh, 0.84% uh, protection against infection during the period of the trial. Although, to be fair, this did soar to 3.7% uh, protection in the uh, five to six months after the trial. And... Um, We'll look at that in more detail. Interesting, though, this pandemic began with China and now China is the last place where the pandemic is going to become uh, endemic as we live with the virus. So lots of interesting detail in this. And just before we go on, we will look at the way that the Chinese give the vaccines. Uh, another reason I'm not too concerned about the vaccination program uh, in China. So here's I think this one. I can't remember where this one was, but it's a Western one. So the vaccine goes in and straight in and no aspiration. Now, this nurse in China, uh, she pops the needle in. This is in a uh, slow-mo. And then she aspirates to make sure she's not in a vessel. And only then, only then, only then does she inject it. So two different uh, vaccines with two different approaches uh, to uh, vaccination. Let's get straight on to the detail now. So China, basically big changes all of a sudden. They're changing to live with the virus. This is the vice uh, premier. Um, China's entering a new situation. Virus ability to cause disease is weakened. Um, actually, my understanding is that the Omicron um, is less pathogenic, of course, than the uh, previous variants, the Alpha and the Delta, for example. Um, but I don't know that it's weakened over the past few weeks. So I don't think that's particularly true. But uh, I'm just quoting what he said. Uh, lifting most of the severe COVID policies, so ending quarantine camps, people can isolate at home, no more family separations in quarantine camps. I mean, just think of the oppression that the Chinese people have been under for all these three years. It really is uh, quite incredible, um, really quite incredible in areas where they've been trying to control the virus. Uh, close contacts no longer taken to quarantine camps. Uh, strict ban on blocking fire exits and fire doors has now come into force. Uh, a little bit late for some people uh, need to show tests for venues is now uh, negated they don't need to do that for most venues uh, less rules on international uh, on internal travel Chinese New Year of course coming up um, I think it's the 21st of January huge internal travel the virus will go all over the country at that point if not before uh, lateral flow tests are now largely replacing PCRs uh, there's going to be continued uh, fig leaf lockdowns in some areas. Foreign travel next year. Cases are 30,000 a day at the moment. Therefore, this is going to grow uh, exponentially in China. There's no real question about that. So the Chinese are, are, are trying to say we're going to have a gradual lifting of restrictions. But the virus doesn't play that way. Uh, you either have exponential spread or, or you don't. So... A bit, a bit of a fig leaf, really, to to uh, to cover the change in policy in China. But I'm I'm certainly delighted that it has changed. It was absurd for a long, long time. So now everyone will be exposed. When I say everyone in the country, there might be a few of the 1.4 billion people that aren't. But basically, everyone will be exposed. Will the medical systems be overwhelmed? I think probably not. Um, now, the medical system in China is quite variable, from excellent to uh, poor. Uh, but they have a, a tremendous ability to uh, increase rapidly if they need to. And also the vaccination program in China is going to offer some protection. Don't jump down my throat at the moment. I am going to explain that. Um, National Health Commission have said all localities focusing on improvement, the vaccination rate of people aged 60 to 79. So they're working on this. Now, the, 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 uh, the Chinese vaccine, the Sinopharm vaccine, is not uh, an mRNA vaccine. It does not get into cells and uh, stimulate the cell's own genetic material to stimulate the antigen, to stimulate the antibody and the other immune responses. It does not use an adenovirus vector 
to go into the cells to stimulate the cell's own genetic material to make the antigen that stimulates the immune response. It does none of that. It's just a plain old-fashioned dead uh, virus, basically dead viral material. Um, nothing complicated, working in a completely, utterly different way. And because it works in a completely different way, it probably has got a completely different safety profile as well. Probably completed if it's working in a completely different way. So you're not going to get a level of systemic, systemic absorption of um, uh, messenger RNA particles in, uh, in a lipid envelope, which is going to travel all around the body. You're not going to get that because it doesn't inject any in the first place. Completely different approach to vaccination. Completely different. Um, so anyway, they're going to encourage lots of people to get this vaccine, um, inconsistent with the, uh, which is consistent with the World Health Organization guidelines. Uh, accelerating above 80, making special arrangements, the same, pull the plug out and really get vaccines going in China. Uh, professor at Hong Kong University. Um, the main way for China to exit COVID with the least damage via... Uh, that is, is via vaccination of uh, three doses of vaccine is a must which does make a lot of sense actually in the Chinese situation and as we say it is a completely uh, different approach to vaccination it's the tried and tested traditional approach to vaccination not using a new novel technology using technology that's been around for over 100 years well over 100 years and hopefully uh, before the start of the year of the rabbit, which is the 22nd of January. Now, Sinopharm, this is the World Health Organization. Now, of course, we have, to, we have to go by the World Health Organization guidelines on this channel, which we are doing. I mean, we wouldn't want to encourage a free-thinking dialectic or anything like that. We, we just want to follow the uh, report to you on the, on the guidelines. Um, strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization is their own little sage. Uh, the vaccine, this, now this is talking about the Sinopharm vaccine. This is all talking about the Sinopharm vaccine. So this is the WHO commenting on the Sinopharm vaccine. The vaccine is safe and effective for all individuals aged 18 and over. And remember, this is not an adenovirus vector. It's not an mRNA vaccine. It's working in a completely different way. So what I've done here is I've given that uh, sentence a tick. Um, Individuals may choose to delay vaccinating for three months following infection. Well, I would have thought at least three months, but that's what the WHO is saying. It's an inactivated vaccine with an uh, adjuvant. An adjuvant is just something which increases the, immuno, the immunogenicity of the virus and is a good idea. Um, and it's inactivated. I wonder why we didn't do this in the West. Because what you can do is basically you can just brew up huge amounts of this virus. You just do it in a, in a, you have a cell culture. You can proliferate the cells in huge vats and uh, you, 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 can, you can make up uh, huge amounts of uh, virus, basically kill the virus and inject it. And there's no, compli uh, there's no it's not complicated. It's, it's a tried and tested process. Uh, that's what the, the approach the Chinese have taken. I don't know why we didn't do that in this country. Let me, I can't wonder, wonder why that could have been. Uh, anyway, we didn't do that. We went for a novel, to, novel uh, patentable um, uh, technology instead. So curious, but uh, but there you go. Um, so that is routinely used in many other vaccines. The, the World Health Organization is 100% correct. This technology is used in many other vaccines with a documented good safety profile, including in pregnant women. Now, I don't have specialized knowledge about pregnant women in this situation, but has it got a good uh, documented safety profile? And I have no reason to suspect this isn't true about pregnant women. Yes, um, we, we know this is true. Um, this this is tried and trusted uh, technology that we've known about for years. Uh, it's not the approach we used in the West. That's what they're using in China. Very clever, the Chinese, as indeed are all races. Uh, symptomatic SARS coronavirus 2 uh, infection and efficacy against hospitalization is 79%. Uh, now, the absolute risk reduction um, is not given on the... Um, WHO website and in the same way the absolute risk reduction wasn't given on the original Pfizer paper they must have forgotten to include it or something and it's not given on the WHO website relating to the, uh, the Chinese vaccine uh, either I think we could expect it to be a bit less than that but having said that 
given that uh, this virus is about to go absolutely all over in China, I would actually expect the absolute risk reduction for the Chinese vaccine to be relatively high over the next uh, six months. I would certainly expect it to be a lot higher than 3.7%. Um, I would expect. Uh, does it prevent uh, infection and transmission? Well, no substantive data, according to the WHO. Does it work against the new variant of SARS coronavirus 2? Uh, SARS currently, uh, SAGE currently recommends, remember this is WHO SAGE using this vaccine, uh, not yet been evaluated in the context of the current uh, circulating variants. But because they're using the whole virus, they're going to be giving at least 20 different um, epitopes, at least 20 different things that the body recognises as antigenic and foreign. So they're going to get a very polyclonal response. And if that didn't cover the new variants, I'd be amazed. In fact, I'm sure it will cover the new variants. Whereas, of course, our vaccines only cover the uh, spike protein uh, antigen. So much, much wider polyclonal response from the Chinese uh, vaccine with this well-established uh, methodology. How does the vaccine compare to other vaccines already in use? Uh, we cannot compare to the vaccines head-to-head, -head, the WHO say. Different approaches taken, design study and the retrospective studies. Is there reason for that? Okay. Um, but overall, all of the vaccines that have been evaluated, uh, have been uh, achieved at WHO emergency listing, um, are highly effective in preventing severe disease and hospitalisation due to COVID-19. And I do think this is true for the Chinese vaccine. So hopefully we'll get that well rolled out to the Chinese population because everyone is going to be exposed to the virus pretty soon. Uh, just a quick comparison with Western vaccines. So this was the original Pfizer paper, 95%. Uh, relative risk reduction from the Pfizer later analysis efficacy uh, th 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 this is the title of this paper actually from uh, expert uh, ex expert uh, review of vaccines the journal uh, efficacy and effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccine absolute versus relative risk reduction and here's the table here from this peer-reviewed uh, publication so as we see the Pfizer vaccine, um, the uh, relative risk reduction, 95% as quoted, the absolute risk reduction during the period of the trial, 0.84%. That's 0.84%, as we'll emphasize in a minute. The Moderna, um, again, absolute risk reduction, 1.24%, relative reduction, 94.1%. Now, what the absolute risk reduction is for the Chinese vaccine, we don't know. As I say, over the next few months, because the, um, there's going to be so much COVID around, I wouldn't be surprised if it's 50% if it's or more, the absolute risk reduction for the Chinese vaccine in the context of the next few months. I wouldn't be surprised. Keeping an eye on that, but um, at the moment we simply don't have the data, so I won't speculate further. Absolute risk reduction, Pfizer vaccine during the trial, 0.84%. As we say, I would expect the Chinese absolute risk reduction to be higher than that in the next few months. Um, I believe some people are very keen to um, sell M mRNA vaccines to the Chinese. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe they make some money out of it. Um, but uh, the Chinese have resisted that and... I disagree with the Chinese on some policies and agree with them on others. Um, this is from uh, patient, patient information. Absolute risk reduction of a disease is your risk of developing the disease over a period of time. So this is what the absolute risk reduction means over a period of time. So uh, and to be fair to the mRNA vaccines, in the five to six months, the absolute risk reduction for the Pfizer vaccine did go up to 3.7%. That's up from 0.84%. Um, it went right up to 3.7% absolute risk reduction. And the, uh, the Moderna went up from 1.24% absolute risk reduction all the way up to 4.9% absolute risk reduction. So um, Chinese, Chinese have delayed far too long, uh, in my view. Um, the, the virus will now go around the entire uh, population. The, uh, the absolute risk reduction from the vaccine should be pretty high, from the Chinese vaccine should be pretty high over the next uh, few months if they can get that rolled out to older and vulnerable people. 
um, which I, I really think they can. Uh, now, really, the rubber's hit the road. They know the virus is going everywhere. They, they will they will pull the stops out on this one, I am sure. Uh, save a lot of lives in China, which will be good. And uh, as people get exposed and re-exposed and re-exposed to the virus, it will become endemic in China as it is everywhere else, pretty well everywhere else now in the world. So um, some reflections on China and comparing them with uh, us. Leave it there. Thank you for watching.